Hello, welcome to www.everydayhdr.com. My name is Blake Rudis, and today I want to discuss smart objects and how smart objects can really help your HDR workflow. So before I begin, I'm going to be working on a 16-bit TIFF file that has been edited in uh, Photomatix Pro. So I merged a couple layers together, uh, already tone mapped them. I'm bringing them into photo, uh, Photoshop right now, specifically into Camera Raw first. Now, if you want to make it so that when you double click a TIFF file that is supported by Photoshop to open up an Adobe Camera Raw, go to Edit, go to Preferences, Camera Raw, and automatically open all supported TIFFs. Press OK. So now this TIFF file that's right here, if I double click it, it's going to open up an Adobe Camera Raw. Pretty cool, huh? So the idea behind a smart object is that you can make multiple modifications to a filter or maybe an Adobe Camera Raw file. Um, they're really powerful in that if you know in the beginning that you want to make this a smart object, it can be very powerful. If you don't select it as a smart object, it doesn't help because you don't have it as a smart object. So we'll alleviate that through this tutorial here. I'm gonna go ahead and make some modifications to this this image just like I would. Um, I tend to like images with depth and this one doesn't seem to have a lot of depth to me because there's not a, too drastic of a change between light and dark in this photo. Um, it's pretty flat, it's pretty washed out. So let's add some shadows. Um, let's look at our contrast, add a little bit of contrast, maybe a little clarity, maybe a little vibrance. Now we're starting to see some depth. Press P for preview and you can see that I'm starting to pull some stuff back in. So now if I want to open this as a smart object, I press and hold shift and open object. Now one thing I really did forget to do is we know working with tone mapped images they tend to get very noisy and I forgot whether it was for the sake of this tutorial or not to do some noise reduction. So. All I have to do is double click on this area right here. It'll bring me right back into Adobe Camera Raw with all the same settings that I had before. So if you've ever worked with Adobe Camera Raw before, opened up the image in Photoshop, you'll know that you can't just go back to what you did in Adobe Camera Raw. You have to know that you wanted that to be a smart object first. And if you didn't know that the secret code to opening as a smart object was holding shift, then you're, you're kind of SOL, right? So. Uh, I'm going to reduce the noise on the sky here and because it's a sky I want it to have a pretty pretty low noise. Let's see what that looks like. Looks good on the sky but I don't like what it's doing to everything else. And that's okay because what I can do is I can zoom into this. I can press alt and click on this mask and anything that's black noise reduction will happen to. Anything that's white noise reduction will not happen to. So. That's another little trick they don't tell you, is that pressing Alt and clicking on that masking, you can actually see what the mask is doing. Um, now, if we press OK, we don't have to press Shift OK because this already knows that it's a smart object. So just press OK and it'll open straight up into Photomatix as that smart object now. So let's say um, you want to do a high pass sharpen because that's a filter, right? Let's go ahead and duplicate this layer. Press Control J and duplicate this layer. We're gonna go to Filter, we're gonna go to Other, and go to High Pass. Let's make it a high, high pass. Ooh, yeah, nasty high pass. And then go to Soft Light to make that high pass work. Now, it's way too much. We know that by looking at it. That That's way too much of a high pass. So we can double click on that high pass, go right back into it, and reduce it. If you've ever applied a high pass filter to a non-smart object, you'll know that um, you you can't just go back and fix it. You can go back into the history and redo the whole high pass sharpen if you want, but if you work in smart objects, you don't have to worry about that. So at any point, you can right click on this and go to rasterize layer, and that will remove all of the smartness, if that is a word, from the smart object and make it just a regular layer now. So you'll notice it got rid of that little box there with a the little information on it. It got rid of all the stuff underneath it. Let's go back. It got rid of the smart filter here. It got rid of the high pass. All that stuff's gone. See those little adjustment sliders here? That's how you know you can go in and adjust it. So right click, rasterize, 
that makes it no longer a smart object. It's now a dumb object, I guess. Same thing here, rasterize layer. It's no longer a smart object. If I double click on this, I get layer style. I get the old uh, Adobe Camera Raw information that I had from there before. So smart objects can be very powerful because they allow you to go back and make modifications to things that uh, you may have forgotten in Adobe Camera Raw or maybe you applied a filter that was a little too strong uh, and you want to go back and modify it. The only problem is you have to know that you want it to be a smart object before you start. So for instance, let's say that uh, we duplicate this layer, uh, rasterize it, and this is A rasterized layer of the one below it go to filter go to high pass and go to soft light I can no longer go back when I double click it I can't go back so you kind of have to know um, on the front side that you're gonna want to make some modifications to this afterwards that's the quick and easy I guess on uh, smart objects um, go ahead and play around with it it can be very helpful in your HDR workflow uh, my name is Blake Rudist with EverydayHDR.com. Have a great weekend.